How does each type of spiritual experience work? Part 2 The higher spirit composes spiritual input. We saw the role of the spirit entity in part one of how each type of spiritual experience is produced. But in this video, we examine the role of perceptions, both before they leave the mind and after they have left the mind, but are retrieved as data and functional input later. The Loom We have a video on our companion YouTube channel, Mystic Symbolism Explained, called The Symbolism of the Loom and Weaving, Tapestries, Threads and Carpets. The Loom is a symbol used to explain how the material and spiritual world work together. Whilst the material on the loom gradually increases and increases over time, behind the scenes is a very complex working mechanism, a system more like a jacquard loom, that is, determining the actual pattern, like the script in a theatre. Although we like to think the design of our life is ours, in truth, the total pattern of the action is very complex, and we may only appear occasionally on the right side of the material when our part of the script is actioned, but spend most of our life on the wrong side, waiting to be called onto the stage. Nevertheless, the click, click, click of the weft thread of time produces the pattern. See our video? The concept of time and the constellation are elogium in our companion YouTube channel, Mystic Symbolism Explained. Symbolically, each one of us is creating one very complex warp thread in the overall material of life. This warp thread is our perceptions, and although they reach our higher spirit, they don't stop and continue to become a tapestry containing all the warp threads of all the objects, a complete picture, the so-called Akashic Record or Common Consciousness of Carl Gustav Jung. Like the spider, who spins his own thread, we spin the warp thread of our lives. And the warp threads of each entity are held together by the weft thread of time and patterned according to the script of the great work. See video Who or What is Responsible for the Great Work? We each have our own thread, our own perceptions but we are interconnected as things and people enter our life and then leave it. All things, animate or inanimate, have perceptions. They may not be living, but if they are the subject of activity or are involved in activity, that will be recorded. Even though some think may have no sense of self, consciousness, it still has perceptions. So let us now see how each type of spiritual experience involving perceptions is created. 
the types of experience and how they work. Let us first start with experiences that are created whilst the perceptions are still in the mind. Dreaming and lucid dreaming. We have two videos on dreaming and lucid dreaming with examples. Although images may be gathered from beyond our mind and thus from the Akashic record, many of the images can be obtained from our perceptions. Furthermore, in a waking state, although we filter out perceptions when we learn and create memory, rejected perceptions are not deleted, just ignored, but still available to us when dreaming. Pure perception or enhanced perception. The introductory video has examples of the ways in which perceptions can be enhanced. And we have some guest videos in the description, but there are also examples in the playlist. Aldous Huxley is one. Although the case of Stephen D may be less of a case of enhanced perception and more the acquisition of a function, being able to smell like a dog, that Stephen did not have functional input. Perception Recall is the recall of one's own perceptions formed in this lifetime, sometimes called the past life review in cases of near-death experience. In the playlist, we have one example video. Rear Admiral Sir Francis Beaufort recalls his entire life whilst drowning, shown here. But there are other people who are able to recall all that happened to them over their lives. And we have added a link in the description to a guest video that describes this. They are actually not doing it from memory. They are recalling perceptions. A bit like reading the book in front of us in the Akashic Record, but very fast. Psychometry Psychometry is the ability to obtain the perceptions of inanimate objects, such as rings or jars. And the playlist has one example, that of the Dentons. To understand how this works, we need to remember that the loom contains all its warp threads, animate and inanimate objects so that a complete picture emerges. Although not everyone can read them, it does not mean they are not there. Sometimes, however, the perceptions are not those of the object, but the traces of the human who handled the object. Past life, maybe even telepathy, the current life. Dowsing. A dowser is able to find hidden objects, and we have one video with links to examples in the video's description. For example, a dowser may, analogously, be able to find the yellow strings rather than the blue or white strings by detecting their perceptions, the strings analogously. But a dowser is actually not as skilled as a psychometrist as they cannot read those perceptions, only find them. Having said this, there are those who have helped archaeologists find objects, and then been able to tell you the history of the object. A little like finding the book of perceptions in the Akashic Library, Tausing, and then opening and reading it, Psychometry. Past Lives We have just one video introducing the concept of past lives 
but a number of links to examples in the definition. Imagine for a moment that the material of the past spreads before you with all its different warp threads. But actually, each life belongs to a personality. And the shelf between each one is the between life interlude. You are a child and have built up very few perceptions of your own. You are open and very eager to learn and unconsciously you start to explore the past perceptions of those who have already lived. And so compelling is one life that you take it on as if it was your own. You have a wealth of information in those perceptions to learn stuff you never knew and be able to form all sorts of memories that aren't strictly speaking yours. They are borrowed. And because the most dramatic, those filled with very high emotion, are the most compelling, a child may use them as if they were his. And even have nightmares and become ill from what he experiences. Birthmarks may only be an indication that access occurred in the womb and the perceptions have become physical, like a stigmata. In other words, past lives exist and can be accessed, but they were not necessarily lived by the child's immortal soul. They might have been adopted as though the perceptions were their own. And although in a child, past lives can be destructive, when an adult experiences them in a lucid dream, for example, these perceptions may be viewed as inspiration or wisdom because they have been experienced by a mind that is still open and curious but mature enough to do something creative with it. Inspiration The video on inspiration describes how past perceptions can be used to obtain ideas for painting, films and even music. The playlist has a video from Robert Dan, who describes how he gets inspiration to compose music, and an interview with Nigel Kennedy on how he plays music. The video description has links to other examples. The inspiration may have come from elsewhere, the so-called Akashic Records, but in both cases the execution and eventual result is theirs alone. The difference between inspiration and wisdom is that inspiration is used and sought using our imagination, and this is Charles Dickens, who saw his characters in a state of hypnagogia. And the same state in which Enid Blyton obtained the information for her books, Wisdom. We only have one video as an example of wisdom. This is Lewis Carroll. But there are numerous other examples on our website www.allaboutheaven.org. Wisdom also uses perceptions, usually numerous related strands, again from the Akashic Records. But whereas inspiration is used by our imagination, wisdom is used by our reasoning ability. Lewis Carroll actually used both. He was a gifted mathematician and metaphysician who used reasoning and then converted what he knew into a story using his imagination. Both wisdom and inspiration involve illumination and can be experienced by many creative people. Pete Townsend of The Who heard celestial music, although he was never able to reproduce it. Remember that the so-called Akashic Records hold the data and functions of all objects. The skill is in how to find them and use them. 
This shared record of all perceptions also provides an explanation for why ideas get developed all over the world at the same time, like the idea for an airplane. The closer you are to the centre, the easier they are to access. Wikipedia Richard William Pierce was a New Zealand farmer and inventor who performed pioneering aviation experiments. Witnesses interviewed many years afterward described observing Pierce flying and landing a powered, heavier-than-air machine on the 31st of March 1903, nine months before the Wright brothers in the USA flew theirs. It also explains why some songwriters and inventors get accused of plagiarism when none took place. Mark Twain's Letters, Volume 2 of 2 Substantially all ideas are second-hand, consciously and unconsciously drawn from a multitude of outside sources. It takes a thousand men to invent a telegraph, or a steam engine, or a phonograph, or any other important thing, and the last man gets the credit, and we forget the others. These object lessons should teach us that 99 parts of all things that proceed from the intellect are plagiarisms, pure and simple, and the lesson ought to make us modest, but nothing can do that. Salvador Dali Those who do not want to imitate anything produce nothing. Steve Jobs Creativity is just connecting things. Prophecy We will end part two by considering prophecy. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Sometimes because another person has said it will happen and we believe them, we in effect make it happen subconsciously. Multiple perceptions. Sometimes a person can unconsciously tap into the past perceptions of numerous people and things and piece together what might happen. The jacquard plan of the loom. But very occasionally, a person will be given a brief glimpse of the plan for the great work and their role in it. But this is extremely rare, as ours is not to know but to cooperate. Thy will be done. <laughs>